Hello there, my name is Justin and my partner is Kyle. Today we will be debriefing you on the distributed denial of service attack that was launched against GitHub, the well-known source code sharing platform back in late February of 2018. A brief agenda for today's rundown includes what exactly happened, what are the technical techniques that were involved, what did the attacker do, who was the target, how did it get identified as a malicious attack, and conclude with how did the victim react to the situation. What happened? On February 28, 2018, an anomaly amount of traffic inbound was detected by the network monitoring system at GitHub. Between 521 and 530 coordinated universal time, malicious traffic originated from over a thousand different autonomous systems across tens of thousands of unique endpoints. The peak of the traffic inbound was 1.35 terabytes per second via the 126.9 million packets per second. So how did the attacker pull this off? This attack is categorized as an amplification attack vector. Its primary technique includes IP address spoofing, autonomous submission of requests to identify public main cache servers, and exploitation of the default UDP enable configuration error that came along with the installation of the main cache utility. So what is main cache? Main cache is a benign, free, and open source distributed memory object caching system that was intended for use in speeding up dynamic web application by alleviating database load. This utility is default setting and the natural characteristic of UDP as a protocol were capitalized by malicious attacker to pull off this malicious attack. By default, main cache utility had UDP support enabled, and it accepts connection requests from all addresses. And UDP does not verify the user who are making the request. It will always, always politely respond to the message requests sent from the users. The attack was architected in the following manner. The attacker first obtained GitHub's IP address via the ping command through a command shell and utilized third-party tools such as HPing3, which came along with uh, Linux, specifically Kali Linux operating system as a vulnerability tool, to spoof the IP address of GitHub. After that, it goes on to make small but continuous requests to the misconfigured main cache servers that are out on the internet and direct the response traffic back towards GitHub. According to the incident report generated by GitHub, this amplification attack has an amplifying factor of 51,000, meaning for every one byte of data sent to the server, it will respond with 51 kilobytes worth of data to the requester's IP address. Who was the target? The target of the incident was platform as a service vendor, aka GitHub, who are running servers under various operating systems. Given that Memcache is a utility available to both Linux and Windows operating systems, it should be noted that if Memcache were to be installed, proper configuration must be put in place. For example, making sure that the accepted IP address range is identified and properly limited. Disable UDP support if UDP is not actively being used. And monitoring the outbound traffic of the server to ensure that it is not being used by other malicious users. Considering that this is a distributed denial of service attack, modifications of the code would only be relevant to the anonymous script that is used to trigger the attack. So how did it get found out? GitHub actually had a network monitoring system put in place that keeps track of both outbound and inbound traffic loads throughout the day. It was detected by this monitoring system and the engineer on call was notified of this anomaly situation. So, how did the victim react? The engineers on call at GitHub were immediately notified of this situation. And within five minutes of the incident, GitHub activated its incident response protocol where mitigation service Akamai Prolexic was involved and all traffic coming into and out of GitHub were routed through its scrubbing center to weed out and block malicious packets. After eight minutes of standoff, the attacker relented and dropped off. In conclusion, this incident proves that it is absolutely critical to have a properly established emergency incident response plan ready to go. 
GitHub clearly does a good job as they were able to fend off the attacker who launched the largest distributed denial of service attack yet within 10 minutes after the incident was identified. So I hope this video was clear and helped you to understand the attack that was launched against GitHub. Your attention is certainly appreciated. See you next time. Peace.